there are several types of ethnifications. I shall mention some of these. First, a nation could be ethnified even when they live in their ancestral territory. There are at least three variants of this. A. When a people are subjected to what I call cultural side, again a term which I have introduced a few years ago, by which I mean systematic liquidation of culture, as happened to the indigenous peoples in the New World, the Americas, Australia, and to a certain extent in Latin America. So what happened is that they are the original settlers, usually some, some social scientists refer to them as first nations, but they are treated as strangers, they are marginalized, therefore I say they are ethnified. B. The tendency is to treat a people as no nationals or outsiders, even when they live in their own ancestral homelands, as in the case of Bosnian Muslims. It's very, very fascinating. You have uh, Croatians, you have Serbians, and you should have called the others Bosnians. Instead you call them Muslims. If Muslims, if the Muslim is a term to be used in the case of uh, Bosnians, the others should be Catholics and Orthodox. Then you brought all of them on the same level in terms of religious identity. But what you are actually doing by designating these people as uh, Muslims is to deterritorialize them, to denationalize them and thereby ethnify them. And see, those, who, those whose ancestral homeland is vivisected between states, there are numerous examples in the world, let me, let me tell you the, the existing ones, because Poland was once uh, ethnified by being divided between different states. The classic example now is the Kurds. They are about 25 million people divided between five different states and they do not have a national status in the sense in which I am talking in any of the five states. Or look, look at the Basque people. The Basque are either French or Spanish. There is no Basque people again Basque nation. Or the Nagas divided between India and uh, Burma or Myanmar as the state is called now. So that is another variety of uh, ethnification where the, the, the attenuation between territory and culture takes place. That's the first type. Second, ethnification results when citizenship entitlements are not fully conceded to a people even after they are adopting the territory into which they migrated as their homeland. People migrate. They want to identify with a new place. But after doing that, even after doing that, they are not really accepted as insiders. The cases of endangered Indian laborers or Chinese laborers settled in many foreign countries. The classic case which comes to my mind at the moment is the situation of uh, Fiji Indians. But to a certain extent, the Chinese uh, Malaysians, because if you compare the Chinese Malaysians with what is called the sons of the soil, the Bhumiputras as they are called, there's a lot of difference. Third, the tendency on the part of a settler collectivity to continue to identify with their original homeland produces what may be called sojourner ethnicity. Leading to ethnification, we have Afro-Americans, we have Afro-Asians, we have Asian-Australians and all the rest. The classic case of course is uh, that of the Jews. They have spent uh, hundreds of years in Europe, but then they were not really accepted as Europeans. They are always designated as Jews. Fourthly, ethnification also occurs when a state or a cultural mainstream tries to integrate the weaker and minority cultural groups. Here, integration actually means assimilation. 
and that leads to the eclipse of the identity of the people. Thus, what is integration from the perspective of the state or the mainstream cultural collectivity is ethnification because their identity is endangered from the perspective of the weak and minority cultural groups. Fifthly, if those who migrate to prosperous foreign countries are denied citizenship, even when they become entitled for it, they remain ethnified. The case of guest workers in West Europe is an example. 33% of residents in Switzerland are guest workers, but they don't have the citizenship rights. There was a time when this great country, Germany, has, has actually enticed millions of guest workers. I remember newspaper reports that so and so who is arriving such and such number, on his arrival he gets a motorcycle. Incendies have been used, but after a while, when their need is over, then they are treated differently. That is another case of ethnification. And finally, even when immigrants are granted citizenship, they may not accept it and exhibit a proclivity to return home. That has happened in the case of some countries. For example, there was a time when Italy, Italy was a sending country. They always sent people out. But then, when they became prosperous, they all went back. Not necessarily because they are discriminated here, in Britain or France or in Germany, but they thought it's much better to go back. So to the extent they remained outside their homeland, there was the process of ethnification in existence.